Hey, good morning, good day. Just getting rolling here on a Wednesday. Excuse me, it's the 13th of March. Let me get a sip here. Cheers. I have a few things to talk about this morning, actually. Before I uh, kind of um, go over the uh, interview that I had yesterday, first um, first business, unfortunately, is um, uh, un the passing of people. <clears throat> Since the weekend, there's been several several um, deaths of significance to um, the music community internationally as well as here locally. So I'll start with local. A couple days ago, a, a guitarist named Benjamin Kushner passed away from cancer. Now, I've never been in a band with Ben, but I played a bunch of shows with bands that he's been in. He's been in the Millions, Mescal Brothers, um, he was with Josh Hoyer. He, he's played a lot actually with my, my dudes, Blake and James. Um, he was a rock and roll guitarist and, um, I know I've shared gigs with him. I've never been in a band with him. He was a good cat. Rest in peace, Benjamin. That's local. Directly here with the vinyl community. I just found out last night, unfortunately, that big Jim Cook who I haven't talked to in years, has passed away. He's a longtime vinyl community member. I used to be in touch with him. Years ago, I sold to he and his wife a one of my um, test pressings that I... Uh, it's a one-of-a-kind that I designed for he and his wife. Um, there was a time when Jim was talking about coming up to visit me, and it just didn't happen. But... Um, Obviously, a, a lovely person, and uh, sorry to hear about his passing. Rest in peace, Jim. And then we have the um, the um, the, the uh, international figures of music who have passed away. The first one that caught my, caught my attention was T. M. Stevens, the bass player, who's played with everyone. The only thing I have by him that he's on is whether it's this David Sanchez album, just as I thought. The T.M. Stevens was a rocker. He was, um, he had the, he was a black, black guy with the dreads and the rock and roll look. He was with, um, Stevie, uh, Stephen Van Zandt, is that his name? The guy that was with, that's been with, um, Bruce Springsteen. They did something together. <clears throat> so I recognized the guy, um, as, uh, you know, a per as a talent and, um, a, I hope that he had a good career. It looked like he did. He um, went for the. I don't have. That's the only thing I have by him because I looked up his discography, and he's played on a lot of really commercial stuff that doesn't interest me. I hope he had a good career. I hope people treated him well. Apparently, he's had dementia for years. Rest in peace, T.M. Stevens. And then we heard about um, Carl Wallinger. <clears throat> World Party and, and uh, Waterboys. A friend many years ago gave me a Waterboys album. He said that he thought that I would like it. I didn't. Wallinger is good. So see, but this is where we, we get into the, you know, idiosyncrasies. He's good, but it's not the kind of good that really appeals to me. The Waterboys and the World Party. You know, I sold the record after I, had, I kept it and listened to it, but... The only thing I have with Wallinger playing on it is Big Blue Ball, this project headed up by Peter Gabriel several years ago. And Wallinger produces some tracks on here and plays guitar on some of this. It's this a good, good piece of music. And the other person that died, um, and I have the record, I do, is um, Eric Carmen of the Raspberries. Um, they had, he's written some major hits. I have this album because I think of these guys as the American Badfinger. That's what they sound like to me. It's like they were, they were close to the Beatles, 
more like bad finger go all the way is a classic pop song but it's not the only one you know he wrote those other big hits as a solo artist you know um the average age of, of folks like Car eric carmen i understand was like seven is was 74 and we just have to face it you know um we're headed for the exit you know the the halcyon days of our youth for many of us are over they are we'll, we'll lose someone today there's other folks we've lost that i not haven't failed to mention it's just that i don't i don't know so many people die all the time so two things if you haven't um, seen my latest <clears throat> chat, yesterday I had Michelle Highway, the maker of this documentary, Energy, a documentary about Damo Suzuki. She was my guest yesterday. Lovely conversation. Inspiring. I <clears throat> really thought, well, just really kind of assumed, since I have been seeing a lot of in, in social media about the um, the documentary, I kind of I assumed that she had distribution and all that together. She's doing it all herself. That blew me away. <clears throat> a, a labor of love. Get this. Um, I'll leave the links again. Someone was talking about wanting to do a screening in Athens. Um, I would I let Michelle know that she says she tried to respond to the comment but something didn't work so I'm suggesting whoever was talking about wanting to do a screening or actually I hope a bunch of you want to see this buy it and show it I'll leave her um, contact below in the in the uh, description box okay her website um, should be a contact there. Really enjoyed talking to Michelle. She's obviously a good person, obviously. And what a gift to spend that time with Damo. She's the perfect person for it because she was really oblivious to his legacy while, you know, she learned of it as she was doing it. But what he means to me, I said it in the... Um, in the uh, chat for me and i don't think i'm the only one damo is the real mick jagger he's the real superstar frontman i the ideal shamanic natural primal frontman i bring up mick jagger because mick jagger is world famous for being um in the world world's greatest rock band and being considered the, the world's greatest frontman for a rock band. And I, I understand why he has that. But Damo is the real thing. Damo. It was pretty cool talking to Michelle. See the, uh, grab this, grab this, okay? So, much, much going on, actually. I just received the new Dave Newhouse, Natura Morta. Dave Newhouse from the Muppins and Mana Mirage. I, Dave honored me by having me play on a couple of the Mana Mirage releases. I'm so thankful for that opportunity. He has finished up that project. Mana Mirage was the next step after the Muffins. Look up the Muffins. You need to know about this band. They're historic to me. So I hear the progression forward, Dave. I hope you see this. I want to say I'm honored that you had me play on your records. Um, you know, a lot of, in many ways, it feels like you guys, you know, are just like, I'm really, you know, I have to get my weight up to play with you guys. 
I think you know what I mean. I'm totally honored, okay? I have to get that out of the way. That it means a lot to me that Dave has included me in his work. I hear the step forward on here. It's not a beautiful cover. Natura Morta, which I believe means still life. Still life. As an art. He has many of his the usual suspects. It's a, it's, a, it's a collective of people, you know, um, surrounding Dave. It's like the American Canterbury. Like, for example, um, John Greaves from Henry Cow sings on a track on this. But he has, the, it's, it's that, it's the cats. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that I've been able to play. Guy Seggers, who has been in, from Belgium, Universe Zero plays bass on there. You know, see, I, I am not on that level. I'm not that good of a bass player, so I understand. I think about me because I have been involved and you catch what I'm saying. It's like Mark Stanley, who I'm on some of his records. He's on here. Forrest Fang, who I've never met, but great musician. My Paul Sears, Jerry, you know, the guys, Jerry King, you know, Sean Rickman, the drummer. This is, this is a step forward. It, it does not sound like another Mono Mirage record. It, you can tell it's Dave. I've only listened to this once so far, but I hear it. Bravo, Dave. This is a step forward. I hope that people really take this in. This is really good. And the humor is there. The, there's a sense of humor to the music. New Dave Newhouse. Before I forget, see, I always forget. I always forget to mention the fact that Dave Newhouse guests on my latest CD on one track. So kind of him to play flute on phrase. So Dave Newhouse is on my new CD. I keep forgetting to mention it. He's one of the guest musicians, which I'm honored. I'm honored that Dave um, contributed to this recording. I'm very proud of it. And you should own this too. If you don't have a copy, you, you, sh you ought to get it. I'll leave the link to my band camp. Buy a copy, please, actually. <laughs> okay, what else? Yes, as always, music and art are the saving graces of the, of the modern world. I turn on the news and it's just a quagmire and it just makes my stomach turn. So then it's back to the music. Okay. I want to say again, thank you, Michelle. I, I know you'll watch this. Thank you so much for um, coming on. And again, thank you for the, the gift of the documentary. So cool. So uh, I haven't been to the record store yet. Looks like I may go today. There's a Miles Davis that I had Homer's Hole for me that they showed in their latest update of um, used records. So that may get me out of the house today. But some records that have been played besides me recording and working on my set for um, opening for Rosalie. Hot Ship, the song uh, Arrest Yourself, it just uh, popped up in my head recently, so I looked up the, uh, vi the video and watched that a few days ago. really like these guys, and so their first album, oh, this is their second album, The Warning. This is very good. Play the whole thing. It's interesting, the mixture of the black funk texture and the the English sensibility I like that I like that it's to me it's like a type of world music in a way the way that similarly the way that um craft work 
around the time of Computer World, um, predicted hip hop and Africa Bombada just took it, you know, he just took it and made it his template. That's another example to me of world music. If you want to talk about cultures coming together and the races blending, music is the backdrop for for healing and peace, not politics. Artists and musicians are the true leaders of the world when it comes to healing. Seems like we always have been. Played most of this. Black Moth Super Rainbow. I like this. Panic Blooms. It's like it's being... Um, it's like it's a radio signal coming in from a real distant planet. And the signal is not real strong, so it's fuzzy. This music sounds like it was recorded on a, like a tape recorder. Um, there's this weird... I almost had the word. I love it. I, I really like that sound. It sings through a vocoder most of the time. But it's just like it's wavering in and out of tune almost. The, the whole... All the music. I love stuff like that. Excuse me, people. I just woke up. What else we got? I'm keeping this, but I put it on and it was like, oh boy, no, this was these guys trying to stretch out, but was still rather hokey to my, for my taste. And I love the association. You know, they're, when they first came out with Along Comes Mary, that really caught my attention. I love this cover. See, this is where they were stretch, you know, trying to pick up on that sensibility, you know, the hippie thing. I only made it through a couple of tracks on here and I had to take it off. And as I see it, there, there were no hits on here. I'm sure there's something redeeming on here, but the first two tracks on side one were cheesy for my taste and I just took it off. But like that green album I was showing you the other day, where I said, I got it back from my friend Nick. Don't like it. I don't, but I'm keeping it. It's, It fits my... Like I was saying to Michelle, my collection to me is like an art piece. It is. It's a reflection of me, my tastes, and my, and my life in many ways. So this... Some records fit in and some don't. And for my personal taste, the World Party contingent Water Boys... It was there for a while, and, it was, and it, then it was gone. Here's something I haven't listened to in a while. This is really good. Don't know why she's not better known. Skinner Box. Uh, Julianne something is her name. The Playhouse. This is her second album, I think. This is not rock music. It's uh, There's even classical elements here. Oh, man, it's hard to, to describe. This is really unique. When did this come out? 80, 80s or 80s? 1990. Juliana Towns is her name. The main artist on here. This is something that I took a chance on probably in 1990 based on the cover. This is very good. It's hard to describe. It's very, very good. I recommend it. Pulled and played. This is this is just a, an amazing work to me. Near Death Experience by Hiromi Hosono with, with Bill Laswell on this. Hosono is is a master conceptualist. He's one of the greatest. To me, he, he is one of the greatest. Like ta like I like I enthuse about Damo Suzuki, being a true superstar of rock music, doesn't never wanted it, but but by nature, to me, by nature, he is the real deal. Similarly, Harumi Hosono to me is one of the greatest minds in music that I've ever encountered. Just. Just, just my opinion. 
And I have one more that I pulled. I've been doing this. Just hit blind pulling for my, my, because if I look at the spines, I won't, there are many records I won't play. So I just pulled this because if, when I see it, I don't think to play. Ipudu, Japanese electro pop kind of band from the 80s. Masami Tuchiya, who toured with um, the band Japan, guitarist. Radio Fantasy, this is very good. They do a very cool um, cover of Time of the Season, which I think they had a minor hit with. But that's really the least... That's the... That's not the feature of the album. This is very interesting where it goes from J, a kind of a, not J-pop, but it's the obvious oriental flavor put into the, the, the pop music with electronics. But then they do these these um, kind of almost, not almost, yeah, they're ambient, ambient instrumental pieces. Not too far from Jansen Barbieri and Karn sort of thing. Pretty cool. So to wrap this up, because it's over 20 minutes, the things to, to pay attention to, and, and, and I would encourage you to seek it out and, and get a copy, is the documentary about Damo Suzuki Energy. Again, I'm blown away and inspired all over again because I'm into the DIY thing, and that was a big part of what I liked about the punk explosion in the mid, late 70s, do it yourself. And I also picked up on that from Can before that, you know, we'll make something new. Um, we'll do it ourselves. So, yeah, make this a success. Let this spread far and wide. Um, it's, a, it's touching, actually. Um, she lets him into... He let her into his life, and you see him intimately here. This is very cool. So there's that. And the new Dave Newhouse. Even after one listen, I can highly recommend this. This is a type of music, you know, I was saying to myself, sometimes proximity is weird. I've been a longtime fan of Dave Newhouse and the Muffins. Since being involved with them, I probably have listened to the music less. Not that I love it any less, but proximity. Do you, some of you know what I'm trying to say? So I'm going to get into this and listen to this today because this is this is a portion of my music love. It's, it's, it's part of the art of this collection. Dave Newhouse and his whole history of music. Very important to me into this collection. And I will point out the fact that Dave Newhouse is on my new album, Interlude. And you ought to have both of these. You ought to buy both of these as well as the Damo Suzuki. Okay. Hope you're all doing well. <clears throat> well, hope, hope, hope life is treating you well. Let me know in the comments.